So let's just see if the subject tracking works with these birds. Oh, you bugger! I'll tell you something, I don't know if you can see that. Just there. But that's what that swan's just done. It come right keen, that did. This bugger here. Wow! <laughs> right, today's video is going to be all about the subject tracking on the newly released Action 5 Pro. If you follow my channel, you know I get a bit obsessed with these tracking cameras. I've done a lot of tracking with the Pocket 3 on Active Track 6. And also the company Telson have released this tracking camera where you can just attach your action camera on top of it and it tracks you. And that does a better job than the Pocket 3 at tracking you to be fair. So today I'm going to do some subject tracking with the Action 5 Pro. I'm going to be putting the new generation 1 over 1 3 sensor through its paces today. So what I've decided to do with Action 5 Pro today with the subject tracking is to be seated, moving left to right just to see how good the tracking system is inside there and then I'm going to do some walking vlogging footage to see if the subject tracking can keep me centre frame then I'm going to be going into some shaded woodland areas also some open fields I'll be doing that just to test the distance of the tracking system so let's get right to it, here we go so to activate subject tracking just on the bottom left here scroll across and you'll see subject tracking so when you're in the subject tracking mode you'll be able to have 1080 and 2.7k only for now unless DJI release a firmware update later in the future and you'll also only be able to go into standard D-Warp well that's my preferred look anyway so I don't mind that one so we're going to go in 2.7k 16.9 ratio and 30 frames per second again standard D-Warp so now I'm going to move in front of the camera and see how good that tracking system is on the subject tracking here we go so straight away on the front OLED screen, I've got a green box around me, just like on the Pocket 3. And I can see, as I'm swaying left to right, that's tracking me nicely. Obviously I can't see on the rear screen, that's why the Pocket 3 is filming that, so you can see. Even if I go right at the edge of the frame, and the other end, I can see that's doing a really good job of tracking me. What do you think? Right now I'm going to be doing some walking vlogging tests with the subject tracking. So at the moment I'm just filming in normal mode, 4K30, Rocksteady enabled, standard D-Walk. And this is what this looks like when I switch the camera right to left. I'm just not taking care at all if that's keeping me centre frame whatsoever. Now I'm going to switch over to subject tracking. 2.7k, 30 frames per second, standard d warp Here we go. So now I'll pan the camera right and left again. Again, I'm not going to take any care if I'm centre frame or not. The new subject tracking mode I am hoping is keeping me centre frame. What do you think? I don't know till I get home and get in post what that looks like. Let's just hope it keeps me centre frame. And now I've covered the subject tracking whilst being seated and vlogging, walking. I'm now going to set it up on a tripod. Again with the Pocket 3 behind so you'll be able to see the screen, how it's tracking me. And what I'll be doing is testing how far it can track me. So I'll be doing it in increments of 2 metres, 5 metres, 10 metres. And I'll keep going until it loses me. What I'll have to do is activate the Mimo app so I'll be able to see. Because as I get past 10 metres, I'm just not going to be able to see if it's tracking me or not and it's wasting my time. Right, so, I've got everything set up, but unfortunately, the Mimo app's not responsive. Now, this is the latest firmware on the Mimo app and the Action 5, and also the Pocket 3 at the rear. But for some reason, you just don't get a green box around yourself at all. And I can see through the front OLED screen that that's tracking me nicely, but not on here, so, what I was saying earlier, when I go past five, 10 meters, I'm not gonna see. So now, I'm not gonna see at all. So we're gonna get rid of this and just do some subject tracking without the Mimo app. Here we go. All right, that's got me. So I'll go about two meters back and see if this subject tracking can track me. So I'm two meters away. Let's just see if it can keep me in frame there. It should keep me center frame. Is 
that working? Again, I ain't got the Mimo app, so that was difficult to see if it did track me. I can see as I'm close, I've got the green box around me now, and that's tracking me rather well. So I'm hoping that at two meters over there, that tracked me. Now I'm gonna go about five meters away and do the same. Here we go. I can see that subject tracking's got me. Let's get to five meters and see how it fares. Let's screen at all, so I'm hoping. That's got me centre frame. If it has at this distance, that's pretty impressive. It's just a shame I can't see. If I had the Mimo app, it'd be a lot better. So hopefully DJI is going to update a firmware where the Mimo app responds to the subject tracking. Now I'm going to go at least 10 meters back, so this is where I could be wasting my time, because if it loses me, I'm not going to see it all. So let's try it anyway. Here we go. Got me in frame. I'm going to keep me centre frame as I'm walking. How did it do? I'll only find out back in post. So now let's up the game with the subject tracking and try a few speed tests. Let's just see if it can catch me. <laughs> let's just see if it can keep up with me. Going left to right. And this is at like one meter. Let's get back to about three. Is it keeping up? These tests can be knackering. Now let me disappear from the frame and then reappear into the frame just to see if the subject tracking can pick me back up. So first of all I'll go down, back up. Now that's impressive, if that comes across how I want that to, that's really good. I can see the green box. Again, down. Straight away it's picked me up, that's good. Now I'll disappear over here and then I'll reappear yes it's got me other side yes I like that I like disappearing from a frame and the technology then can pick me back up that's where the pocket 3 does falter because as soon as you disappear it's not going to pick you up even behind trees which gives me a good idea when I get to the trees I'm going to be going behind trees and hopefully this picks me up. If it does, I'm going to be really excited. Okay now, we've done a bit of testing in the open field. Let's get to the shaded wooded area. Here we go. So now I've done the 2 meter, 5 meter and 10 meter subject tracking. Let's go behind this tree. Leave the camera where it is because it's just off centre and then I'll reposition the camera so it is centre frame. Here we go. Now come on Action 5 Pro, you must beat the Pocket 3. Here we go. Again, I can't see the OLED screen. There's no Mimo app, so it's not responsive yet. Now let me hide behind the tree and then reappear. Okay. I think I'm going to try a thicker tree. There's one just down there. So I'm just going to walk past it both directions as before, but this time hide behind it for a few seconds. Let's say about five seconds. because I really want to try and catch this camera out. And if this has been working the entire time, I'm absolutely impressed. Here we go. Has it worked? I wish it had. 
wish I could tell. Now I'm going to hide behind there for about five seconds. That's picked me up. Amazing. I'm hoping it's worked because every time I come close to it from at least two and a half meters I can see it's got me. Now I'm going to just stick my head out behind the tree. Let's see if it does that. Does it track me? Can it see me? I'll tell you what's funny about that. Well, by the way, I hope that's worked. There's someone just over there. <laughs> They're looking at me really strange. You get that sometimes, it makes me laugh. Right, so now I've done the seating tests, the walking vlogging tests, the distance tests, the disappearing and reappearing tests. I can only think of one more test and that's, as I'm vlogging, instead of just going left to right, I'm just gonna go all the way around, not too fast, to just see if it can keep me centre frame. Here we go. So now I'm filming in normal mode, 4K30, Rocksteady enabled standard D-Warp. I'm gonna swing the camera all around. I just wanna compare this shot to when I get the subject tracking enabled. Here we go. Right, so I'm going to do exactly what I've just done, but with the subject tracking enabled. Although it's going to be 2.7k 30 frames, but that's as high as it goes. But that's just good enough anyway. So let's get on with that test on the subject tracking. Here we go. I've just walked back to exactly where I were, because I want to try and replicate that as much as possible. So here we go. This is subject tracking enabled, 2.7k 30 frames. Again, I'm not looking at the camera. I'm just hoping that this new technology is going to be able to keep me centre frame. Let's hope that worked. So while the sun's fully out and it's really strong, let's test that one over one three cents a new generation on the backlight. How does that look? Am I a shadow or can you make me out? Right now I've come to the end of the video and I think you can agree that I've put that subject track in really through its paces today. And one thing to note, these new 1950 milliamp batteries really are good. I've been out here for three and a half hour, although I've not been filming continuously with the Action 5, the battery percent's on 52% from 100%. So that's a massive upgrade from the Action 4 battery at 1,770 milliamps. So I do hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today on the subject tracking with the Action 5 Pro. Do stay tuned to the channel as I'll be posting plenty more tutorials with the Action 5 Pro in the near future. But for now, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and bye for now.